Right, I haven't really got much to show at the moment. I'm still th printing a lot of parts out. Um, but a couple of things that I do want to show you in this video is, as I keep repeating, I want to make the second version of my proton packs much lighter. And as a result, I've opted to use this plastic acrylic stuff for the motherboard instead of using metal. Now I think this is about 320 grams, whereas the steel motherboard was 1.7 kilos. So it's going to be considerably lighter already. The next part that I've printed so far in my mission to make things much lighter is the top left boxes. Now I've modified this file compared to how it was on Thingiverse because I basically built the Proton Pack in 123D and the one on Thingiverse just didn't quite fit my requirements so I've changed the bottom slightly by um, adding something to bolt onto the acrylic and I've also put bolt holes through it. I've also relocated the display and moved it up slightly although I think that might need cutting out a little bit more and I've moved the switch up slightly. A few aesthetic mods that I've done to this is rounded off all the corners. I think that one's still sharp. But around there, I think that was one of the ones that I rounded off and round here. So, obviously, on the whole motherboard, if we get this out, that part will sit up in the corner like that. So, the cool thing about this acrylic is I can just heat up five inches, I think it is, on the bottom and bend it round. So, that'll be quite nice. Another thing that I've done so far since the last video is I've took some PVC pipe and I've drilled some holes in it and I sprayed it with chrome. So that's going to be the barrel of the proton gun. So, and then last week I designed the handle to go around the barrel, which looks like this. I printed it out in PLA and it has a 41.2 millimeter diameter hole which should have been enough to fit that through it and although it does go in it's very tight so I'm gonna struggle to get that all the way down I think I just need to do a lot of sanding um, inside it uh, but I think I'm gonna make it slightly bigger for the next time I print it the next thing I would like to show you is these little parts and these are for the toolbox that sits at the bottom of the motherboard. And what I've basically done is taken the file off Thingiverse and used it as a kind of guide. And just built the shape of the ends of the toolbox. Um, and then what I wanted to do was get some plastic angles to go between them. You can get the right angle things that I showed you in the previous video. Uh, to keep them spaced apart. And then I bought this one millimeter plastic card. Basically, I will just wrap these around it um, whilst heating folds into the corners. So that's going to keep the weight down a lot. And the cool thing about this plastic card is in A3 size, it is pretty much the perfect length and width to go around these. So I don't really have to cut that at all. So. That's going to be cool and will reduce the weight considerably. I have also printed Sponge Face's um, heat sink to go on top of the Faraday cage, which I will, of course, link in the description. And I can't remember whether I showed you these last time, which is just the circuit board that goes next to the, um, the gauge on the Proton Pack. So. That would sit up there, that about there, probably stood up, and this here. So that's how far I've got with the actual Proton Pack so far. Now I wanted to have a look at the mechanism for the retracting and extending plasma barrel thing. As you can see in the middle, there's the plasma that I showed you in the previous video. And the rest of the parts are just kind of attached at the moment. Now the reason that tape is on there is because when I tried to cut the plasma out of the black casing, I accidentally cut through the wrong part. So it's taped on for now, but it will eventually be glued. Now if I take this white part off the end, inside you can see all of the electronics and capacitors, I think. Yeah, capacitors in here 
for controlling the plasma thing. So I've basically just tucked those up inside this white tube here uh, to keep them out of the way and they'll probably be glued in there. And this tube is going to be used as a rail for the sliding mechanism. So, and I'll show you how that will look now. So this is the familiar looking barrel of the, uh, th the thrower. Obviously it will also have the handle in the middle there. If we pop it over this side so you can get a better view. And the way this will work is, as I mentioned previously, there will be a runner inside the gun box. And when you press the runner, this will extend out like that. And then when you press the trigger button, the plasma uh, tube will go absolutely nuts. And then as soon as you turn off the main power to the, um, to the proton pack, it will retract back in again. Like that. And look like the barrel that we're all familiar with. And I'll show you the mechanism right now for how I'm going to get that to extend and retract like that. So here we are on the UK eBay site and I came across this which is a micro stepper motor with screw and fitting for linear motor. And a linear motor is basically the name given to a motor that pushes something backwards and forwards instead of spinning. So as you can see on this device here, the motor is on the end and it turns this corkscrew looking thing which in turn pushes this rail up and down. If we go down the page slightly, he discusses it and he shows a quick demo video. So let's have a look at that. You can see as the motor's turning it pushes the uh, the block up and down. So that's the mechanism I'll be using to extend and retract the barrel. So now that you've got an idea which mechanism I'll be using, um, it will be mounted either in here or at the top there um, with an extender to get it through this tiny little hole here. So as the motor turns and pushes the bracket along the slider, it will extend the plasma tube out through the end there. The one thing that does bug me about this part is because of how tight the white tube fits inside the silver tube, it would be very difficult to actually have red lights in these holes. And that was something that I was really keen to keep in this because it's quite an iconic part of the proton pack. So what I've decided to do to solve that problem is to mount some LEDs just on the edge of here at the back and the front. So basically they'll shine up and down the tube. Now if I've got one LED here so I can show you what I mean. Basically I'll have one there and then another one here and kind of just continue that all the way around. And because of their profile I believe that when they're fitted the, uh, the white tube should hopefully still be able to um, extend and retract up and down the tube. But we'll have to see when we get to that point and if things don't quite work out as planned then I can remove them and think of some other thing. But obviously I'll have the same thing in the back end as well with LEDs just attached in here facing outwards. So that's, um, those holes will be kind of closed when this is in its down position. And as soon as you turn it on, the red lights will ignite, and as it slides up, we'll go the other way just to make it easier to understand, as it slides up, it will expose the gaps between those holes, that will sit in the middle, the LEDs on this side will light up those holes, and the LEDs on that side will light up those holes. And then, obviously, you can also see the plasma thing um, going nuts through the holes as well, and it'll be poking out the end. One final thing that I decided today that I would also like to do is these knobs on here, on my previous Proton Pack, they were static and they didn't really do anything. Well, I've changed that now. I want them to control the red, green and blue attributes of the NeoPixels. So one would control how much red is showing, one would control how much green and one would control how much is blue. And the reason I want to do that is so basically I can have an infinite number of colours that the Proton Pack can glow. As you saw in my previous Proton Pack, the one only had the choice between red or green. 
I figure that if I were to set red all the way to full and blue all the way to full then I would obviously get a purple light and likewise all the way through the colours uh, pretty much any combination of the colours that red, green and blue can make so with that implemented on analog potentiometers I can have a proton pack whichever colour I want, literally. So I think that'll be a nice new feature that's going to appear in the new proton pack. Um, I hope to start building the proton packs and putting everything together within the next couple of weeks. I'm still going through some testing phases, so we'll see how I get on over the next couple of weeks. In the meantime, please go and like my Facebook page, uh, Captivating Costumes. And subscribe to me here, please, because I love having people watching my videos. I like to teach people. If you have any questions, please ask me in the comments. And I will see you next time. Thank you very much for watching. It's always appreciated. And see you soon.